Hi everyone, I'm Harry Jarvis, host of That's Life Entertainment Nashville, and I'm here on location in Printer's Alley, and I'm talking to Denise Maddox, yes. Maddox, and she is the representative of Say Printer's Alley, a Facebook page that was also created on Facebook. Let's talk to Denise as to where we stand right now in the development of the Printer's Alley, alley structures that are being bought by a, a real estate developer. Uh, how's everything going? So far, we're going okay. We're kind of in the dark about a lot of what's going on. We do know that three of the four buildings have sold. Now our question th th is... Three of the four buildings have been sold? Yes. Okay. There's four buildings being sold to turn into a hotel, boutique hotel. Okay. Um, latest development is that three of the four have sold and all we know out of a news article in the Tennessee is that they do plan to keep an entertainment side. So okay. our hope is that maybe some of our cries have been heard to keep Printer's Alley in Entertainment District. Our next question is, are they kicking the biz businesses out that are here now or planning okay. to bring in their own entertainment? Okay. I understand that uh, there's been a Facebook page created and it's up to, what, 14,000 likes right now? Yes, we've got over 14,000 likes and we've been getting signatures in the alley, which I believe are over 3,000 signatures. Mm -hmm. And then we have an online petition as well that we've got people signing, showing their support. We've been selling t-shirts that have been, we've already had to make a second run of t-shirts. They've been selling so great, so. What is, what is, what does the, what does Printer's Alley mean to you personally? I mean, I know you spent some time here and stuff like that. So what does it mean to you, Printer's Alley? Printer's Alley has become my home away from home here in Nashville. It's it's the people as much as it is the buildings. The owners of the bars, the people who work in the bars, the people who play in the bars, and our, many of our regulars, we've become a little family. Mm -hmm. We look out for each other, and right now our family's in danger of being split up and kicked out. Okay. And so that's that's where my passion lies is is in the people that could be displaced here. Right. Um, I I understand also. I mean, obviously, uh, this is this alley's been here for a long time. It has a lot of history. There have been a lot of artists that have made it big out of this alley. I heard Rascal Flats. I believe was what right next door over here. They played. They were a house band. Right they, they were the they were the Tuesday night house band for Fiddle and Steel Guitar Bar. Oh, oh they played here. They right played at the right fiddle. here. Yes. Okay. They the, cool. They were called Deuces Wild back then. Deuces when they were wild. discovered, yes, and uh, they were discovered and became Rascal Flats, and now we never see them anymore. <laughs> you, you know, you know, it's, you know, it's interesting. Do you know it's interesting, folks? They were called what? Deuces Wild. Yes. It looks like they made a good gamble because they went on to be one of the biggest bands in country music. How about that Absolutely. one? Absolutely, and they are. They're tearing the road up still today. So okay. they're they're some busy boys. So there's been a lot of great things uh, uh, that have been created in this alley, and a lot of great bands have come out of here. Um, what would you say is one of your most memorable experiences about being in the alley here? Oh my, because there's so many of them. Um, probably one of my most memorable has to be Fanfare, I want to say it was 2008 or 2009, mm -hmm. maybe even as far back as 2007. Right. Um, Eric Church was going to do a secret concert at the Fiddle and Steel during CMA Fest, okay. and the secret got out. And before we knew it, the bar was so far over capacity and the line went all the way down to Church Street with people trying to get in. And it was just amazing to see these people who would never have maybe walked down Printer's Alley discover it. Mm -hmm. And from that night, we've still got well, regulars so who come back who are like, I can't believe Eric came. He played here. You guys let us come in and just were so hospitable to us. And they become regulars and family of, of the alley and of the fiddle and everything. And it was, without a doubt, Eric Church decided to come in during CMA Fest, do a free show. I think he played for a half hour, 45 minutes. Brought in his whole band, they just took over. It was incredible. So this, this place means a lot to everybody. I mean, I was in here a couple days ago, and I mean, I saw a, a bunch of tourists come through here. So sometimes they may not hang out in the clubs here, but they'll come through, take pictures. They want to take care picture oh, of their yeah. wife or their husband. Matter of fact, they have some big wood, uh, posters with pictures on them that you can stick your head in you know the yes. ones you've seen at the carnival they have those here so a lot of people come in here and get pictures and those um, if the developers were standing here in front of you right now what would be the first thing you'd say to them please don't kick us out that would be my my number one question my number one plea is please don't kick out what's already here because it's something special um, the owners have put their heart and soul their lives into it for the last 15 to 20 years and if anybody knows anything about the bar business, a bar staying open more than 
five to ten years is amazing. And to have successful business, why would you pick something out that's got such a family and such a base, fan base, I guess, really, um, to bring in something new that may or may not even make it? Right. You're guaranteed success here. And I understand you've made some shirts that are available too? Or? Yes, we've got shirts that were made. Um, they have the Say Printer's Alley logo uh -huh. on it. They've been selling like crazy. Where are they available? At? Um, you can buy them online at SavePrintersAlley.com. Can you, can you tell the people at home what, what that website address is for the t-shirts? It's, it's uh, SavePrintersAlley.com. And at the very bottom of the page, there's a place where you can order the t-shirts or just come by the alley, come see what it's all about. Mm -hmm. And we're selling them out of the Fiddle and Steel Guitar Bar. Just come up to the bar, let us know, we'll go grab you one. They're $15, uh, 2X, 3X, or 17 But nobody's making money off it. We're selling them straight for what it costs. So. So, um, so where does it go from here? I mean, what are you waiting on right now? I mean, I understand that there's been some papers signed now. Is there? Is it like legal now? They've actually they've actually gained ownership of the place now on paper. Yes, they. As of as I understand, as of yesterday today, they closed on it. They closed so the new on it. Owners own three of the four buildings, and so now what we're waiting to hear is what they tell the tenants. How long do they have to get out, or are they, are they being allowed to stay? So you're probably thinking maybe in the next couple of weeks you're probably going to have some kind of answer as Absolutely. to where everyone stands. Absolutely. I have, I have a really good feeling about this because the fact that they're not going to get rid of these structures that are in place right now and they've got to build onto it, Correct. I think that somehow I think there will be a compromise made some way. Some I'm way, somehow. So. Perhaps maybe they may want to take and not close them down and maybe they might want to do some remodeling and refurbishing of what where they're at right now and stuff like that. So, uh, so I think that we all have to keep our our, our thoughts positive, and I'm sure Absolutely. you are. And you've been real, working really hard around the clock to try to save this alley for all the future generations that come to Nashville. Absolutely. And is it that's what it means too? It's about future generations. Future gener but it's for future generations and to honor the past. The history of this alley is mm -hmm. it's it's a sordid history, but it's amazing to go and look at old pictures and see what it used to look like to what it looks like today and how it's we have kept the honor of the place as it's gone you know but maybe the signs have changed but the 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 spirit behind it is not okay well that's it um i guess what we're doing right now is we're going to be waiting to hear back from the real estate developers correct uh, the place has been uh, closed on and the papers have been signed. They're just waiting for the answer back as to what's going to happen to the existing uh, bar establishments here. And Denise has been working really hard on uh, trying to stay on top of that and uh, spread the word out to everyone out there. Uh, this thing is not over, so uh, continue to support the Facebook page, you know, pass it on to your friends and things like that. And uh, it's been nice talking to you, Denise. Been nice talking to you. Thank and you. I'll be crossing my fingers for all of you and doing everything that I can to support and to save Printer's Alley. This place means a lot to me. I mean, the first time I came here, I met uh, Kelly Keegi, the drummer of Night Ranger and Bourbon Street Bar. So that was pretty cool. And those kind of things just don't happen everywhere. So anyway, I'm signing off. I'm Harry Jarvis, host of That's Life Entertainment Nashville. I'll talk to you later. Bye.